ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها فكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلالة في النار الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي انزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعله عوجا الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا ان هدانا الله الحمد لله رب العالمين all praises due to allah who has guided us to this way who has blessed us with islam who has strengthened and, and fortified us with iman and who has beautified us with ihsan all praises due to allah who has blessed us to gather this day in safety and security may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perpetuate and preserve the state of safety and security that we enjoy alhamdulillah our religion and the faith of our religion that it brings to us is founded not on rationality if you will there are rational proofs for islam there are rational proofs for the existence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but that's not the foundation of faith one of the greatest foundations of faith is love one of the greatest foundations of faith is love and love is something associated with the qualities of the heart that are unseen so the foundation of love just as the reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of his essence is that all of these are from or both of these and many other realities associated with our religion are from the unseen world realm alimul ghaib and so we have no immediate rational proof for the existence of these things but we know they're real so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the very beginning of the quran informs us that our faith an aspect of our faith is to believe in the unseen realm in fact this is the first description of the believers in the quran Well Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Alif Lam Mim ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ أَلَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ This is the this is the scripture there is no doubt concerning it it is guidance for those who are aware of their lord 
Huda lil muttaqeen And then those muttaqeen The first description Allah gives of them Alladheena yu'minuna bil ghayb Those who believe in the unseen And then wa yuqimuna as-salah wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun and they establish regular prayer and they spin from what we have bestowed on them upon them but the first thing alladheena yu'minuna bil ghayb So love which is an emotion that we know is real is one of the foundations of faith Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an and or before that well we'll go to that Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْ دَادَيْ يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ that amongst the people, there are those who take equals. That they love as they should love Allah. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ Those who believe are more intense in their love for Allah. In other words, those things that some people take and they set them up and they love them as they should love Allah, the believers are more intense in their love of Allah than their love for those things. Some people take money and they love money as they should love Allah. Now there's nothing wrong with loving money in and of itself. Especially if one loves money so they can use that money feasibility. That's one of the people we can envy. Right, two people we can envy. You can envy the person who has much money and they spend it fi sabilillah. We can envy the person that has much knowledge and they use it to, and they share it with people. Allah says He's made money beloved to us. Hubbu shahwat. Zuyina lin nasi. Hubbu shahwat. Min al nisa'i wal banini wal banina wal qanatir al muqantara. وَالْقَنَاتِرُ الْمُقَنْطَرَةِ مِنَ الذَّهَبِ وَالْفِضَّةِ وَالْقَيْلِ الْمُصَوَّمَةِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ وَالْحَرْثِ ذَلِكَ مَاتِعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَاللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ حُسْنُ الْمَعَابِ So it's made, been made alluring to people. زُيِّنَا لِلنَّاسِ حُبُّ الشَّهَوَاتِ The love of their lust for the opposite gender. What's mentioned here is women. But women for men, and for, for children, and heaped up hordes of gold and silver. وَقَنَاتِرُ الْمُقَنْتَرَ مِنَ الذَّهَبِ وَالْفِضَّةِ وَخَيْلِ الْمُسَوَّمَةِ And branded steeds, وَالْأَنْعَامِ And cattle, وَالْحَرْفِ And cultivated fields. That's been made endure endeared that's been endeared to people but the believers love Allah more so they're not going to murder someone to get their farm because they love the cultivated fields because they love Allah more and they know Allah has sanctified the human life and forbidden murder murder they're not going to go into interest just to to, to be able to buy a house. They love Allah more. The believers. They love their spouses. But they're not going to put alcohol in their store because their wife wants the income to go up. So she can stop shopping at Walmart and she can stop start shopping at Nordstrom's or Saks Fifth Avenue or Macy's. Tired of shopping at Walmart. Just sell the alcohol. We'll get more money. I can shop at Nordstrom's. So I think I need a new wife. <laughs> Those who believe are more intense in their love for Allah than their love for women or men. Na'anhalallah. 
Every day you receive news. This one has left Islam. This one took off hijab. Why? She doesn't think she can get married wearing hijab. So you love the guys more than you love Allah? Or you think you have the power to bring yourself a wife or a husband? So if I make more money, even though it's haram, I'll get a, a real trophy wife. You know, the kind of wife you walk into the place and everyone turns their head. I get one of those kind of wives. You've already dehumanized her. She's a trophy. She's not someone to help you to get to the akhirah. She's not someone to cook you good, wholesome food. She's not someone who will be a good mother for your children. She's just someone that looks good. You can save yourself the trouble. Just get it, some scissors. Cut out a picture of the most beautiful woman. You can go to FedEx Kinko now. Just get a picture of a supermodel. And then paint a hijab on her. And then go to Kinko's. Get it blown up. Cut it off and paste her onto your arm. That's all she is. She has no human qualities that you value. She's just a trophy. Go to Acme Awards and tell I want a trophy shaped like a beautiful woman. And then put Velcro on it so I can stick it onto my arm and walk around with it. So you love her more than you love Allah. You love the guy more than you love Allah. You think that if you get your income up into another ta higher tax bracket, you're going to attract that beautiful woman? You think if you take your hijab off, you're going to attract that beautiful guy? You bring it to you, not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's jahl on top of jahl. Jahl muraqqab. Compound ignorance. Ignorance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ignorance of the religion. Compounded ignorance. Allah tells us in the Quran, you have nothing to do with anything. You only, your will is only effective if, if it's consistent with what Allah has willed. And if it's inconsistent with what Allah has willed, it's not going to happen. That's how reality works. So love Allah, please Allah. And then pray to Allah with sincerity. And then see what happens. Otherwise, people are setting themselves up for failure. And they're setting themselves up for frustration. Ibn al-Ta'ala, the very first aphorism he mentions, in his collection, Al-Hikam, Al-Ata'iyya, Min Alamatil, Min Alamatil, Min Alamatil, Atimadi, Alal Amal, Nuxan or Raja in the Wujud is Zalal. From the indications, Min Alamat, Atimad, Alal Amal, that you're relying on your actions is a loss of hope when you experience a setback. Or oh, I studied hard for the test and I flunked. So, I'm, I, where was Allah? Allah was there the whole time. For wisdom, He didn't decree that you pass. So where's your faith? Where's your love for Allah? If you love someone and they say, wait for me here, and they don't show up, you keep waiting. If you love them, she's coming. You know, she says she's coming at 5 o'clock, stuck for Allah. I'm out. So you wait until midnight in zero degree weather. If you really love her, you'll wait until the next day. Maybe she meant 5 o'clock tomorrow. Camp out, have a sleeping bag. People love the 49ers, right? For a playoff ticket, they'll sleep in the parking lot. They'll spend the night in the parking lot. They'll set a little pup tent up to get a, a playoff ticket. 
to the 49ers game because they love the 49ers. They'll wait for two or three days standing in line for the 49ers. But as soon as what we expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should have done for us because we did what we, we think will affect something in Allah ta'ala's creation, bam, we give up. One of, the, one of the qualities of love, one of the linguistic meanings of love in Arabic, al-hub wal-mahabba, yani al-luzum, is, 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 is uh, constancy. Even in English we have that meaning. If someone, we know they're, they're going to be in love for two weeks, we say, you're not in love, you're infatuated. This, this will be gone in two weeks. So your 13 year old comes, you know, Abu, mommy, I love the teacher. So okay, <laughs> this will be over as soon as you get your first test result back. Because no, you're not in love, you're just infatuated. Love is deep. Love is permanent. Love is permanent. Luzum. Hadam in ma'ani. Al mahabba wal hub. Al luzum. Al Arab yaqulun. Ba'irun muhib. Al ba'irun muhib. Yani lazama makanin wahid. So a, a camel that's muhib, it stays in one place. So if we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're not going anywhere. <coughs> Our faith isn't going anywhere. Our commitment to Islam isn't going anywhere. We're going to be consistent. I'm staying right here. I'm amazed. Every day someone apostated. What happened? Well, they went to philosophy class and they read a book. One book and you gave up your faith? I'm not even going to start thinking about it until I read an encyclopedia. And then read the response to that. You read the argument and you didn't even bother to read the counter-argument. Where's your faith? Where's your love? Didn't even bother to read the counter-argument to the argument that puts you out of Islam. That means you were never fully in Islam in the first place. Because if you were in, it would take someone putting a gun up to your head to, to have you fake like you're leaving. Just don't shoot. Okay, I'm not one. I'm not one of them. Put the gun down on these suckers. Shadu an la ilaha illallah. Shadu anna Muhammad rasulullah How is that cheap? Your faith is that cheap? You give it up for one little pamphlet written by some wretched, miserable Kafir. You go look at the lives of these people. Look at their lives. There's no joy. There's no love. There's no mercy. There's no fulfillment. In many cases, there's no family, meaningful family relationships. And all of that frustration and bitterness and hatred and anger is coming out in that literature. <laughs> Those who believe are more intense in their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is part of our religion. Love. Love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Love of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La yu'minu ahadukum hatta akuna ahabba ilayhi min walidihi wa waladihi wa nasi ajma'een. No one of you truly believes until I am more beloved to him than his father his son, and all of humanity. All of humanity. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the foundation of faith. 
There has to be love. There has to be love. Shar'an. Al-hub aw al-mahabba. Mail al-nafsi ila ma tadhunnuhu khayra. So the, the shari definition of love is the soul inclining towards that which it knows to be good. Which it knows to be good. It's we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the good Allah ta'ala has done for us. Then there will be a, 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 a skeptic. Say, well, God hasn't been good to me. I lost my job. I lost my family. I lost my brother in a car accident. I lost this. I didn't have that. I was denied this. I failed at that. Tayyip. And what do you get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you patiently persevere through all of that life? All of that loss. Permanent bliss for the rest of eternity. Our life isn't confined to this world. So if I lose in this world, I'm a loser. If I'm denied in this world, then I'm, I'm deprived. This world, as, as one of the early says, dunya sa. This world is just a fleeting moment. Fajal hatta. Fill this moment with the obedience of Allah. We're not living for this world. This is one of the great deceptions. Our minds have been so steeped in the materialistic reality that surrounds us, we can't see beyond this material world. And so if I'm denied in this world, I never got the car I wanted. I never got the job I wanted. I never got the spouse I wanted. I never got the kids I wanted. I never got the this or the that or the other that I wanted. That's half of the problem right there, I. But besides the point. So what? Do you want Jannah? Or do you want or, 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 or all of your aspirations confined to this world? Our Prophet taught us to pray in, in our dua. Allahumma la taj'al. Allahumma sawra rasulillah. La taj'al dunya akbar hammina wa la mablaga ilmina. Don't make this world. This is a prayer. Ya Allah. Allahumma. Oh Allah. لا تجعل الدنيا Don't make this world أكبر همنا the our greatest concern ولا مبلغ علمنا nor the extent of our knowledge. Don't make this world our greatest concern nor the extent of our knowledge. We should be far more concerned about Jannah than we are about this world because this world passes. Look how quickly. Some of you have gray hair now. You remember the last time, it's like yesterday you looked in the mirror, it was all black. It was like yesterday. You looked in the mirror, mashallah. Tabarakallah. It's all black, no hina. Naturally black. Now you look and it's gray. Then it's going to start falling out. It's going to get patchy. And then we're gone. Then what? All you thought about was this world. All you worked for was this world. All your passions and obsession were collected with this world. This world is going. No one can deny it. Then what? Then what? Allahumma la taj'al dunya akbar hammina wa la mablaga ilmina. Don't make this world the, our greatest concern, nor the extent of our knowledge. No, all about this world. And this is the, the materialistic orientation of the dominant cultural and civilizational force on this world. In this world, it's materialistic. They're not a split in atom. They're not a split in atom. They are not to build tall bridges. 
but they can't figure out a way to make peace between people. They can't figure out a policy. They can't even reasonably discuss a meaningful policy <coughs> to keep our kids from going into schools and blowing each other away, as we see happening every other month or so. That's a spiritual disease that there is no insight into by the peep by the atom splitters. It's a spiritual disease. <coughs> but if your world is the greatest concern, then the love for that world, why can't as a nation, we can't even have a meaningful national dialogue on youth violence? Because we, we can't figure out a way to get around the NRA. We can't figure out a way to get around this or that lobby. Not just the NRA. We can't have a meaningful national discussion on Palestine. Because there's a lobby that gets in the way. We can't have a, a discussion on guns in our society. We can't have a meaningful discussion on many of the critical, on alternative energy. We can't get around big oil. All of it is connected to this world. And none of it is looking at higher values, higher meaning, higher principles. Allahumma la taj'al dunya akbar hammina wa la mablaq ilmina. Don't make this world our greatest concern nor the extent of our knowledge. Don't make this world our greatest concern nor the extent of our knowledge. We're in and our young people. Young people, beware of what you're getting in your universities. The dominant philosophy is a philosophy that's totally antithetical to any meaningful religious, uh, religious belief. The relativist philosophy. There is no absolute truth. Islam is founded on absolute truth. Starting with la ilaha illallah. That's an absolute truth. That's axiomatic. If you don't accept that, there's no tawheed. If there's no tawheed, then it's all relative. There are no uh, binaries. Everything has to be conflated into one meaningless jumble. Where the whole, the whole spirit of the Quran is based on binaries. Allah shaitan, faith, disbelief, iman, kufr, light, darkness, striving, uh, neglect, ghafla. So when our whole mind is being oriented away from the fundamental axioms that give meaning to the Quran, and we're bombarded with this, most of it subconsciously, is it any wonder? So many young people are apostating. We have to reform our education, how we educate our community. We have to reform our orientation. We have to reform how we even see Islam. We have all of this materialism bombarding us. And we can't even systematically strengthen and buttress our souls against it because any practice or any belief that would provide the vaccination we need against these bacteria are innovations. It's bidah. It's from Tasawwuf. Sufism's bidah. We have to rethink this whole Muslim project in the face of modernity or we're going to see some things we have never seen in the history of this Ummah. Like Muslims cannibalizing Muslims, murdering Muslims. Like mass apostasy. We've never seen this since Muhammad وسلم, walked this earth. 
May Allah Ta'ala give us thabat. May Allah Ta'ala give us wisdom. May Allah Ta'ala give us insight. May Allah Ta'ala give us strength. May Allah Ta'ala give us love of Him. Allahumma inna nas'aluka hubbak. Wa hubba man yuhibbuk. Wa hubba al-amla alladhi yuballighuna hubbak. Oh Allah, we ask you for your love and we ask you of the love of those who love you and we ask you of the love of those actions which convey us to your love. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر لي ولكم للسائل المؤمنين يا قوم الصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد آل صلى الله عليه وسلم كثيرا إن الله وملائكته يسعدون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد آل صلى الله عليه وسلم when we say tasawwuf, we need tasawwuf, we're not talking about anything that someone puts a stamp on. There's sound practices that all of the ulama of this ummah have agreed upon and there's things that are diseased and cancerous and even dangerous. And a lot of the movements in the end of the 19th, latter half of the 19th century that were anti tasawwuf were, re were reacting to a lot of the things that are not sanctioned but there are good solid practices that can strengthen our hearts and strengthen our our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we need to examine otherwise we're swimming upstream against a very powerful current and when we're in a and when anyone's in a situation like that they need all the help they can get so if someone can throw us a rope that is suffice Muslims. Ask, ask yourself one question. We'll stop here. Because the time is up. Lower my voice. The children don't get scared. Oh, he was yelling. Scared. Ask yourself this question. Is anything in any Muslim country, Philistine, Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria even, worse than what the Muslims encountered when the Mongol hordes, Genghis Khan and his descendants, swept across the heartland of Islam. It doesn't even measure. They say 60,000 people have been killed in Syria so far. And may Allah have mercy. And one innocent life is one too many. So I'm making a point, I'm not belittling the suffering of our brothers and sisters in Syria or anywhere else. But that's one town. 60,000 is one town. How many died in Samarkand? How many died when the Mongol horde swept through? And the whole these cities that were like Jannah on earth were raised to the ground and burned to the ground. How many died in Bukhara? How many died in Tashkent? How many died in Baghdad? But why were the Muslims able to accept that blow and maintain their composure? and maintain their, their focus and their tawheed and within three generations bring those invaders into Islam. Because they had faith that wasn't going to shake, they had love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they weren't going to abandon even in the dark days, even in the dark days that they encountered in the face of that scourge. And this is what we need. This is what we need in our day and time. This is a time for strong Muslims. This is not a time, if you're weak, you're going to be swept away. And everyone has the capability to be strong. All of you hold to the rope of Allah. Everyone can hold on. But we have to choose to hold on. We have to choose to be strong. We have to choose to be steadfast. And if we make that choice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will strengthen us. When there's Ashabi Kaf, the companions of the, ha ka the cave, when they decided that they're going to stand up in the face of their people who were weak and they were going back on their religion. What does Allah say about them? 
He says, وَرَبَّطْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ إِذْ قَامُوا فَقَالُوا رَبُّنَا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَنْ نَدْعَ مِنْ دُونِهِ إِلَاهَا لَقَدْ قُلْنَا إِذَا شَطَطَا Allah said, we strengthen their hearts when they took a stand. وَرَبَّطْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ إِذْ قَامُوا So they had to take a stand first. But once they took a stand, once they said, I'm being strong, once they said, I'm not turning back, once they said, I'm not afraid of the Romans and their persecution, I'm not afraid of the gladiators, I'm not afraid of the lions, I'm not afraid of anything they might do to me, Allah Ta'ala strengthened them. وَرَبَّطْنَ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ إِذْ قَامُوا When they stood up and they said, Our Lord, رَبُّنَا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ we will call on no other God besides Him, other than Him. This is what we need today. Because we're, we're facing some difficult and challenging times. And they're coming from many different levels and many directions and many angles. And if we're not strong, we'll be swept away. May Allah Ta'ala give us strength. Allahumma ufeel al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat wa al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat al-Ahyai minhum wa al-Mu'at Rabbana la tuzid kulubana ba'd idh hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-Wahhab Rabbana afrq alayna al-Sabran wa thabt aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-Qawm al-Kafirin Rabbana afrq alayna al-Sabran wa thabt aqdamana wa tawathana muslimin wa afu anna wa ufeelana wa arhamna أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماءنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظالمنا وانصرنا على من عدا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين وعفو عنا وفيرنا وارحمنا أنت من لنا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أكم الصلاة يرحمني ويرحمكم الله